In today's shoe, I'm going to be capturing a heavy metal inspired vintage fetish fashion shoe. Hey everybody, Lindsay Adler here, and I love my job because I get to play dress up and photograph my beautiful friends. And so you may have seen in some of my previous YouTube videos, I photographed this stunning model, Brianna Ashley, many different times. But most of the times that I've captured her, it's been a much softer look, maybe 1950s, 60s, vintage inspired, very glamorous. And so we wanted to try something completely different, something out of the ordinary, something aggressive, something from a totally different time period. And so you can see by this look, we went for something that was heavy metal inspired, something with spikes and leather, something aggressive, something out of the 80s and 90s. And so the piece that we have here is created by the costume and fashion designer by the name of Rice. You can actually see the link to her work in the description below. And so we started with that piece and then it was, okay, well, how do we light this? How do we style hair and makeup? One of the things I find really important is looking at many different references and collaborating with other artists that are pulling from different references. Because the more that you know and the more that you expose yourself to, the more things you can draw from in your work. So for example, for me, when I'm deciding the lighting, well, I think if I want a really hard, aggressive look, I want hard lighting. And if I'm going for something from the 80s and 90s, well, why not pull a reference from a photographer that was prolific during those times? And so my inspiration here is a photographer, Herb Ritz. Herb Ritz very often would put his subjects on the roof of his studio against a white wall bathed in sunlight. And so that is what I am emulating here. I'm going to be using a single bare strobe, hard light, with my subject up against a Savage Universal super white background. And I'm going to play with those shadows and have that Herb Ritz feel. So now that we have the beautiful styling as well as the lighting, well, what about the hair and makeup? Well, Brianna actually suggested that the hair be inspired by the B-horror film actress, Julie Strain. And so we were pulling in all of these different references to give us this look. Okay, so now, of course, once you have the key ingredients, it's about bringing it all together. All right, so here are the things I'm going to keep in mind. First of all, I'm going to give my subject a prop, something to play with. I find that people can get really emotive. They can create more of a character when there's some sort of a prop rather than just posing for the camera. So we'll have a writing crop to play around with. And I want my, my images to have lots of energy. And so over here, you can see that we're going to be using a Real Effects fan. Uh, this is the Real Effects fan 2. And this is specifically made for blowing hair. So we can create something with a lot of energy and a lot of movement, especially since that hair is quite heavy. We can lift it away from her face and make everything look lighter and more energetic. Now let's talk a little bit more about the lighting uh, with this single strobe. Something that you wanna keep in mind is one of the fundamental rules of lighting. The smaller the light source is relative to the size of the subject, the harder the light. So what that basically means is if you pick a small modifier or move your light far away or both, all of those things give you a harder light source, which will give you more crisp shadows. So let's take a look at the shot we're working with so far. One quick test, great. You can already see that without a lot of fuss, it already looks fantastic because it's in the preparation. It's in the hair and makeup and knowing what your concept is and making the lighting match this. Now, I'm also thinking that it'll probably pop a little bit of contrast to this, make it even more aggressive. But what happens if I want to, for example, not have a shadow on the background? I want to have one a closer up shot with a clean white background. What I can have my subject do is step further away from the background, change my angle slightly, and then make sure my framing doesn't have the shadow cast behind her. So can you take five steps forward for me? So I'm gonna move around to the side and now when I capture this shot, all I see is a clean white background behind her. So those are the two combinations I'm going to play with. Her flat up against that background or stepping away for tighter beauty shots. Okay, so I have all of the fantastic ingredients here to work with and now it's time to get the shot. So let me turn on the fan and watch her work her magic. Okay, and step closer to the background for me. Right there, perfect, here we go.
I love what we got here, but I think what really makes the magic of it is having a concept and having everything work together, including my subject giving me that amazing expression in those beautiful poses that match the wardrobe, which matches the lighting, which matches the props, which all of it comes together. And so that's why it's always important to lead into any shoot with a concept. Now for these images, I was shooting with the Canon R5 and the Canon 24 to 105. And if you follow my work and you see me in the studio, you know that this is my go-to camera and lens combination. Now, if you love these images, or if you like fetish fashion inspired work, you're definitely going to want to visit my workshop site. I have worked together with Brianna to put together a fetish fashion workshop. It's amazing concepts, incredible models, and an opportunity for you to shoot looks and create beautiful images just like these. So be sure to check that out in the links in the description below. All right guys, so be sure to like and subscribe because I have so many more videos just like this one coming your way. See you next time.